Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for iPad today is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Coming up, are you either getting or giving an iPad this holiday season? Well, we have five apps you absolutely must download on any new iPad. Plus, the App Store got skitch, Livestand got deals, and Kindle for iPad got a lot better. Fire who? All that and ultimate Apple fanboy MG Siegel joins me on iPad today. This episode of iPad Today is brought to you by Audible.com. To download a free audiobook of your choice, go to audiblepodcast.com slash iPad Today. And by Ford, featuring available voice-activated Sync. Sync gives you versatile access to music, podcasts, and more from just about any device. Check it out in the new 2012 Ford Focus and at ford.com slash technology. Oh. <laughs> Leo's not here, and Chad's not on the board, so there's actually no swipe. Hi, everybody. Welcome to iPad Today. You might think this episode looks a little bit strange, because usually Leo Laporte is sitting in that seat. Leo's off this week, but thank goodness we have our number one fan favorite guest host, M.G. Siegler, to step in. Yes, thank you for having me. Welcome. Good to, uh, good to have you back. Wh when was the last time you were on the show? At least a couple months ago? Yeah, I think so. Well, you didn't do it last week either. I was gone. We were in Barcelona, actually. Yep. It's all very meta. Leo did the show alone. Um, I haven't actually seen the show yet. Um, I'm afraid to watch a little bit. <laughs> um, but I heard that actually it was perfectly fine. It was it was Leo alone. He had a little picture of me in the iPad. Yeah. You know, it was sort of a little bit of I a... I saw that, yeah. A shrine, <laughs> I guess. So, yeah. So, it's uh, Leo's off this week. He has um, taken uh, about half of the week off. For the holidays, he and I will both be back next week. But MG is here um, to take us through the holiday season um, in show 77, which no one but me cares is a palindrome episode, which means it's very special. So this is 77 weeks you've done it now? That's right. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, because we've never actually missed a week. So it's 77 consecutive weeks. Not all shows can say that. Sometimes yeah. they take a week off here and there, and everyone knows that I don't like taking time off. That's pretty impressive that you've been able to do 77 shows in a row. Yeah. All about one device that didn't exist like a year and a half ago. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Well, and uh, every time that they come up with a new one, it gives us all sorts of new material. So come on, yeah. Apple, make us proud. <laughs> what do, you, do you think there's going to be an iPad 3 out in March? I mean, it was last March. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't know anything for sure, but I would bet that in March or April there will be the iPad Three. I don't know if they'll call it that or not. I was. I'd assume they call it that, and you know, Retina display and yada yada. So Retina display is something that is, I guess, sort of a given at this point. Because, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Which is great. Right. Uh, but what else can we? We can't really get a lot thinner. No. The, well, there's actually talk that you know, in order to make it uh, Retina display and have it keep the battery life, maintain the battery life, it might actually be a little thicker. Maybe not. Really not that noticeable, but maybe a little bit. And, you know, I don't think that would be that huge of a deal. This thing is, is pretty thin right now. Uh, I don't know what else they would change about it, though. It's, um, you know, obviously there will be things they change for iOS 6 coming, uh, you know, next year. But mm -hmm. th they won't launch with that. So I really don't know what else they would do with it. Retina Display, everyone's been talking about. Better cameras? Or at least one? Better? Yeah, they should. They, it still has a 0.7 megapixel, right, camera yeah. on the back. So that's ridiculous. Uh, but it, it does shoot 720p. So they'll do probably a 1080p mm -hmm. video thing and maybe a, a 2 megapixel uh, still cam or something like that. And Leo's always saying, ah, nobody uses the iPad for a camera anyway. I agree. But there are so many apps that have camera built in. So yeah. it's like, yeah, you might not be taking it to a concert and using it as your primary Well, camera, I feel like every tech conference I go to, there's someone in the front row, you know, up there <laughs> taking a picture. You know, like That's not nerdy. Blocking every single person's view behind them as they frame it and try and uh, take the thing. Yeah. But um, I don't yeah. know. It, it, it's hard to know what else they would do with the, um, with the hardware. I will say one thing I... I don't know, again, anything about this, but I wouldn't be too surprised if they actually try out 4G on the iPad first, um, like LTE 
stuff before they do it on the iPhone. Obviously, it didn't make the 4S, um, and, you know, there's talk that it might be included in the iPhone 5 next year. Right. I wouldn't be that surprised if they try it out on the iPad first just because the big knock that everyone has on 4G is that it's an awful ding on battery life. And battery life is one thing that's not a problem with the iPad because it's got a great battery life, 10 hours or whatever it is. So they can afford to get to take a little bit of a ding on the battery life uh, for the iPad if they offer, you know, imagine having a, a 10 megabit per second uh, connection to it if you get the 4G iPad. Yeah, that's a really good point. One of the things I love the most about the iPad, and I would hate to say that I'd, I'd be okay sacrificing any of it, is the battery life. Yeah, but I think they would just make you know a, a nice little toggle that you could easily toggle it on and off as you wanted to use the 4G. Obviously, they'd recommend that you use Wi-Fi when you can use that still, mm -hmm. but... I wouldn't be that surprised if they did something like that, and that could be, like, the second big selling point of the device. You know, it's something you can take with you. It's the one Apple device you can take with you and use at really high speeds no matter where you go. You still have the Wi-Fi only iPad, correct? This one? No, this one's actually a uh, this three. One, because he has more than one. I do. I have many iPads. This <laughs> one is a 3G one. I don't have the service turned on, though. Oh, like, you, don't. you know, I tried it. I did like a month to month thing where I turned mm -hmm. on for one month, but I don't really use it that much um, because I also have the iPhone where I just tether it to that uh, if I want to use when I'm not within Wi Fi. But then Wi -Fi. that's a more expensive iPhone plan. So yeah. it's all It all depends on. See, my iPad having 3G is such a lifesaver because I'm the person at the airport when you have to pay for Wi Fi or whatever who just uses so the here's, 3G. So here's something I don't even know. I don't think that this is the case, but you would know with since you use the 3G on it, can you even set it up as a, as a hotspot? No. Do, they don't have that option? No. That would be pretty cool if they did have that. Yes. Especially if they do a 4G iPad and you could set that up as a hotspot and kind of connect your computer to it and everything. I'm not really sure why. I'm not really sure why. I think it's probably it's because available. of the deal that they negotiated with AT&T and Verizon. They, it's a pretty good deal to begin with, so I'm sure that they don't want people taking advantage of that and using that as their primary uh, uh, you know, connection thing. Though, of course, they could have some plan where they charge, you know, a crazy amount of money to be able to do it. Maybe they'll do that. Maybe so. Well, in this episode, we were racking our brains. What are we going to talk about? We're coming to the end of the year. Uh, what's a great theme that sort of represents everything that we've done thus far? And we figured, since everybody's doing their top five, top 10, top 30, top number one, whatever's in the tech world, that's like the number one article that you read this week because it's easy to do and it's you know, good for SEO. We thought, why not, if we can't beat them, join them and do our top five must-have apps. Now, this is not necessarily must-have, well, it is must-have for us or else yeah. we wouldn't be recommending them, but it's more of like we figure a lot of people are going to be getting new iPads this holiday season, maybe for a gift, uh, maybe you're giving one or maybe you know that you're getting one. What are the top five apps that won't be pre-installed on your iPad that you absolutely need? So, you want me to go first? Yeah, go ahead. So this is, we're going to go through these somewhat quickly because a lot of these apps you're familiar with, but it's good to have a little brush up. My number one is Dropbox. Now, Dropbox is, uh, you're probably familiar with Dropbox, but it's, it's a really great way to, it's almost like, it's like the iCloud before the, there was iCloud, really, for right. files, photos, pretty much anything that you want to share um, on multiple devices. Uh, Dropbox is free service that you can download. Um, on variety of devices, iPad app uh, is very nice. Well, they make you ch they charge you if you use more than a certain percentage, but very few people, I think, use that. But if you want more than X amounts of gigabytes, then they charge you. That's true. It's yeah. uh, is it five gigabytes or two gigabytes for free? I think it's five. I think it's five too. And I've never actually gone over it because I mostly use Dropbox for small things like text files that have passwords. They're in saying them. it's two in the chat it's room. Two. So it's two. Okay. All right. Well, thank someone you said it's five now. I think it's two. Yeah. I th I feel like it's five because I was just thinking something. In fact. Uh, all 52% 2.2 gigabytes use. I think it's five. Anyway, because uh, I just downloaded Dropbox on, on my, on my, your MacBook Air earlier today. But Dropbox is, uh, it's just one of those lifesavers where if you have something in the Dropbox cloud, what have you, uh, can really save you. It's also a really nice way to get files off of your iPad without having to sync up to your computer, go through iTunes, none of that stuff. Um, photos is a really, really great um, uh, example because there are so many photo apps on the iPad. Again, the camera is kind of wonky. It's, um, it's easy to import photos via iCloud right. on your iPad, but then how do you get rid of them? Dropbox is really good for that. I mean, you can just, you can send photos to Dropbox. Some um, apps have Dropbox nicely integrated. Um, some don't. 
but um, it's a great service, and it's it's totally free, at least to use on your iPad. So that's my number one. Number two, not going to be a surprise to anybody, is Flipboard. Um, I've been singing Flipboard's praises since the beginning of time because it is it's actually kind of my favorite app. Um, but I, I know that some people are still sort of trying to figure out if Flipboard's right for them. And what I always say is it's not going to replace a hardcore RSS reader, mm -hmm. um, and it might be a little cumbersome if you're just looking for facts and you're trying to get through a bunch of articles really quickly. Yeah. But uh, I think it's. I think it will replace an RSS reader for most people, the people who would never use it, you know, who my parents would never use an RSS reader. But they, they would no love what this. That is. Yeah, they would love this, something like this. It's, like it's like very visual. I, uh, I do wish, you know, I love the new version for the iPhone, and they're not quite... Um, they haven't reached feature parity yet. I would love to see, you know, they have kind of a new best of area on the iPhone only right now where they, they show you like, I don't even know what the number is. It's it's uh, ever growing, but I think they show you like the top 20 stories you should read right now based on what you've clicked on in the past, based oh. on your connections. Um, so that's iPhone only right now, but they said they're going to bring that to the iPad version as well because that's the one thing that I click on the most on the iPhone version. Really? Yeah, and you feel good. like it's pretty accurate? It's for good. The most part, yeah, the it, it's one like. of those things that'll get better over time as you know, as I click on more um, more articles and teach it uh, what I want to see. But it's pretty good. That would be, I think, what a lot of people would say. The Flipboard like competitors have that, that Flipboard, Flipboard doesn't. doesn't right. Something like Zide or right, Newsme, right. or I mean, I could go on and on. So if Flipboard's getting into that game too. Then they really would be hard to beat. Instagram um, support, uh, which makes uh, it, it it's a great nice. Instagram view. Because you can like everything right from there exactly. and just do it. It's much better than Instagram on the iPad because, of course, Instagram is still only an iPhone app. Right. <laughs> I don't know who this is. Oh, Justine. Of and course. they just added Tumblr support, mm -hmm. which is good. Um, yeah, it's yeah. a great viewer for a lot of things. Flipboard's great. Again, completely free. My third is RDO. Uh, RDO is one of... Um, not, not the only one, one of a few uh, streaming music apps that have gotten a lot of, uh, here we go, a lot of attention over the last year. Now, there are the people who say, I'm not a streaming music kind of person. I like having files on my computer. You know, I want to use something like Google Music or iTunes Match. Um, that's fine. Uh, I think RDO is actually a really nice compliment to that because I'm one of those people too. I have a huge music collection. But sometimes it's cumbersome to go back and... and sort through all of that stuff. But you like RDO more than Spotify. Spotify like is the one that gets all the buzz now. Spotify like. gets all the buzz because, yeah, well, it has better partnerships. It's, it's... And it has the big Facebook, Facebook integration. Facebook integration. But RDO has it too. Many more users overall. But right. RDO has a beautiful iPad app. So yeah. that's why RDO wins in my book. Also, it's a smaller company. It's, it's, uh, I, 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 I like the way that they went through their interface from a design eye from the very beginning. Spotify is pretty great. Yeah. But I don't think that Spotify looks as nice as RDO. Now, of course, you're thinking... There's music, RDO is US only, though, right? RDO is... Well... I think so. That's what they're saying in the chat room, too, and I think that that's right. I think that's why people... No you know, Canada? Might be Canada, too. But come on, that's really the US. Oh, my God. <laughs> Whoa. Um, oh, boy. Am I going to get in trouble for that? Well, uh, okay. Well, th I, okay. RDO, well, Pandora is, has the same problem. Right. Um, yes. It, it, as far as worldwide audience goes, RDO might not be for you. For now, for me, I think, um, yes, if you're in the U.S. only, um, it's delightful. They have a really good social element, too. You can follow people. I'm looking at um, what's in heavy rotation on my networks right now, um, which is people that I've decided to follow, some people I know in real life. Um, but then they also have certain brands that are on RDO. Uh, Pitchfork, for example, I could follow uh, the, the albums that those folks are recommending. So I love RDO. It is just wonderful. Now, of course, RDO isn't free. The app is free, but you have to pay for a monthly service. Right. Um, it's about $10 uh, if you want access, uh, offline access, um, mobile access, uh, stuff like that. Spotify is free, but you won't get any mobile access, which is defeats the purpose in right. my mind because I'm not always sitting at a, at a computer. Right. So that's number three. Number four is Hipmunk. Uh, everybody knows Hipmunk because uh, <laughs> Leo does a really good Hipmunk, actually. Uh, in the travel section, I'm trying to figure out where Hipmunk is. There we go. Hipmunk uh, didn't start off with an iPad app, but um, got an iPad app some, you know, a few months ago. And this is just, uh, in my mind, 
absolutely the best way uh, to search for flights. Um, I recently, we recently got back from Barcelona, so if I wanted to search for, uh, oop, I'm coming from San Francisco International. And we actually used Tipmunk for our our flight to get to um, to get to Paris and then come back from Barcelona. That's true. And it worked really well. It we got did. an awesome deal. We got a better deal than we could get anywhere else, in yeah. fact. Why? Because Hitmuck had a partnership with some, like, Right, it was airline. one of the mystery airlines where they don't tell you who it is beforehand, but it ended up being a... Uh, it, it was a deal that seemed like it was too good to be true, but, you know, we went and came back and we got on both flights, so <laughs> right. it was good. Yeah. They didn't kick us off, yeah. which was nice. Yeah, if I wanted to search for a flight from SFO to, uh, to, uh, to Paris... Um, leaving today, well, that's not going to work, actually, because I know, um, let's say leaving tomorrow, coming back on the 6th, go ahead, search for flights for one person, Hitmunk does his little dance. The, the thing about Hitmunk is you say, well, wait a second, I mean, there's, there's Orbit, there's, there's, there's cheap tickets, there's, there's all sorts of ways, you know, Kayak is very big now, there's right. all sorts of ways that I can search for flights. That's true, Hitmunk has the best interface by far. And now that I know that it can give us a deal that I couldn't find anywhere else, it's totally worth The other subtle thing that they do that I love is tell you which flights have Wi-Fi on them within mm. the U.S. You know, they have a little icon to show you uh, this, this flight will have Wi-Fi. There's, uh, Hitmunk also does a really nice thing where you can look, okay, so here are a bunch of options for the dates I selected to go to Paris from San Francisco, and, and it's uh, sorted right now by something called Agony, which is nice. Agony is sort of an aggregate of how much does it cost, uh, what you know is it? Uh, what time is their departure? Is it like 5 a.m. type of a thing? How long is the flight? You know, you can have to stop three times type of a thing. But let's just say that you only care about cost. You can start filtering your results or the length. You know, like you definitely want a direct flight. You don't even want to even deal with you know stopping in Newark type of a thing. Um, and then the times of departure. You know, if you have to leave as early as possible type of thing. So you get a lot of a lot of. Um, a leeway with Hipmunk. I love it. It is great. Good, good iPad app. And finally, Google. Now, I told you that I was going to... Hey! Google. I told you that I was going to cover Google uh, before before we came up here today, and you were like, Google? What are you talking about? You mean the little search box up in the corner of, the, of Safari? I mean the Google app. Oh. It's not... It's not... It's very fancy. It's not yeah. G+. Plus. It's not... Um, it's not one of their shopping apps. Yeah. It's nothing like, it's not Google Catalog. So I actually, I haven't, I did, I have it on my iPad and I haven't used it in a long time. I see it on your screen now. It looks, uh, it looks nicer than I remember it looking before it was just like the most rudimentary thing. Now they've, they've actually given it a bit of branding that looks, uh, like a nice version of the website. Well, yeah, not only that, not only is it, you know, this is sort of my Google homepage, so I could go like, whoop, and, uh, replace Safari on my home screen, but... All of my Google apps are right there. So in a way, um, I've said this before to Leo. But so does G so Gmail now has a native uh, iPad app. Does that when you click on that, does that take you to the native app or does it take you to the web version? Okay, no, it, it takes, takes you to the, the web, web version. version. Which why look, I hate this. Why do they still have? They have all this screen real estate. You can obviously sniff uh, for what browser are you using. Why do they still have that ridiculously small login thing? Um, Why use that? I mean, just look at all that wasted space right there. Why not use more? <laughs> that's a good question. It's awful. You it, can do it, that. Oh, actually, that's, you oh, can that looks, actually do that. <laughs> and that looks great, yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good point. Besides that, yes. besides that, I love this because, yes, Google search is, is fine. Yeah. But that's not really, I mean, it, it's, I can use Google Search a variety of different ways, but I like the Google app because it, it could become my 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 browser really, but it's it's everything else. We've got Google Plus, we've got Calendar Docs. I use both of those things on a daily basis without fail. Google Reader, Photos, um, and so on and so forth. So I love this. I, I I think it looks really nice. Google Earth, Blogger, even I'm actually not a blogger. What is user. Google Earth? Click on Google Earth. What does that launch? That has to launch the native app. Yeah. Okay. Or it takes you to the the app store to get the native app. Yeah, I don't actually think I have it downloaded okay. yet. Yeah. Well, so how, why does that disappoint you? Well, because why doesn't Gmail do that when they have the native app? Uh, you know, that would be kind of cool if, like, you had a directory and it knew which native apps you had and which well, you didn't. Well, Google the app was updated before Gmail oh, okay. the app so was So maybe released. they'll do that with the next so iteration. It's, yeah, it's, it's probably just a matter of them catching up with each other. But anyway, those are my top five, and uh, I really think that they uh, would be welcome on anyone's new iPad. They're good. Thank you. Uh, okay, so you want my top five? Now. I do. 
So we're going to have one thing of overlap just because it's ridiculous not to mention it. I mean, my favorite app is still Flipboard overall. Yes. So, you know, we already talked about it a bit. I can load it up here. and <laughs> You can see it again in all its glory. How does MG's Flipboard differ from mine? Ooh, Bond, Bond James, James Bond. Bond. That's the first. Well, nice. That, that looks nice. like something that would Chris be Chris should like that, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so, uh, oh, and we have a nice Hey Girl thing going on here. Oh, and, Ryan Gosling. Uh, <laughs> you gotta love that. And Hunter is right here. That's nice. He'll, he'll like that, too. He likes every time I mention it. Hey, Hunter. Things. He works um, on YouTube. And so one of the things that they've done recently that they didn't have before is this little accounts area now. So you, you can sync uh, between the iPad and the iPhone and make sure that everything is in sync. So when I load it up on the, on the iPhone, if I change anything here or if I change anything on the iPhone, everything will, will uh, continue to be the same regardless of, of which, uh, which version you're using it on, which is really nice. And Flipboard is doing a really great job, I think, of adding a lot of content partners. They just added ESPN, which is great. Uh, so that's a really nice way to to get different ESPN stories, and you, and you dive into them, and they're and they're presented in a pretty pretty nice way. Um, they also added uh, recently Esquire, which I also love. And so it's it's becoming and New Yorker, of course, they have. It's becoming a way that I use it even more than I use. For Newsstand. example, yeah, newsstand because I have both New Yorker and I have Esquire, um, and I go to those every once in a while, like when the new issues come out, and I look at them. Um, but I like it just as much reading it here because it's all all included right there. And I love things like being able to track a uh, a specific uh, Instagram tag, like I track my beer, which shows. Uh, <laughs> well, you started that, right? Which that is a little your... hashtag thing, and so you're able to follow that, and I can see all the different beers that people are drinking all around the world. Well, that. Isn't that nice? It's funny. Yeah. It's it's like it, it started out as just you, and now they're very rarely you. Yeah, and it's great. I love I seeing that. I tried to do the same thing with my wine. It didn't catch on quite as well. You need to just keep at it. Well, keep doing it. then Oink got involved, and now I have to <laughs> like things on Oink. It's very complicated. I also love um, Flipboard because it's one of the actual use cases for using uh, Twitter lists. So, like, I have a list just named A here, and I, and I have a bunch of different sources that I, that I want to read from. And so when I do that and then I put it into Flipboard, it's a nice way to scroll through that because I never actually look at that on Twitter, but it's a great way to create your own, uh, you know, your own personalized lists and then be able to look at it for what content you want on Flipboard. So that's Flipboard. So we both, there is the overlap there. I think that's the only one that, that, we, uh, that we overlap on. My second one is uh, Instapaper. Instapaper. So Instapaper is... Why didn't I think of that? Instapaper has been around for a long time, of course, um, and it's been, you know, something I've been using for many years now, three or four years. Uh, but it's it's especially great on the iPad, I think, because the iPad is such a great reading device, and it allows me to easily bookmark anything that I that I come across during the day when I'm sitting at the computer mm -hmm. and just doing regular work, and I don't have time to read something, and then so I uh, I get into it, and it can come right into uh, Instapaper, and it's a it's a great reading experience. Um, so, you know, I'll pull up a little thing here, some little blurb about and Steve Jobs. Instapaper, also a very successful iPhone app. Yes, iPhone too, of course. I, mean, um, I, I believe Marco Arment, who's, who's the creator of Instapaper, uh, Instapaper um, for iPad is what Instapaper HD or Pro used to be. Yes. So it's a, right. like a 199 download or something. Right. And they have... Um, you know, they have if you're a, if you're a paying member, they have all kinds of things that you can do now with the API. They have uh, different integrations that they're coming up with, so you can a be able to to pull in things through other apps. But the app itself is still is really nice. They upgraded it, I think, a month or two months ago or something, where they have a, it, it give it a little bit uh, nicer of a UI, and they have some other new social features. They have friends area now, so you can see what what your friends are liking, mm, uh, and cool. they have an editors area to to be able to get something to read that you might not think about. And these are nice because they're often longer stories that you might not even, you know, normally look at. And this is like a, a Vanity Fair article, for example. Um, and yeah, it's just a, it's a perfect, I think, use case of something like the iPad, where it's a great reading experience. Well, and you can also, if you've got Instapaper everywhere, then again, it's sort of your bookmarks. Right, it's synced. It, it, in a very nice Right, place. I use it on the web, I use it on the iPhone, and I use it on the iPad. Um, number three. Number three. So I'm going to be boring here, but I'm just going across, you know, the, the main apps on my main screen. Twitter. But I think that this is this is one to talk about because Twitter is is in a bit of a, a, a controversial state right now because of course they just updated the the web version and they updated the iPhone app. Yes. But they left the iPad app alone and they say that that uh, updates are going to come in and they're going to change it a little bit. But I really hope they don't change it in the way that they've changed the iPhone app. 
I really, I've been trying to like it, and I've been, you know, using it for two weeks or however long it's been out now. The, new, about the, iPhone the new iPhone version. And I just can't get into it. It's like, it seems slow to me. Every time I load it up, it takes a few seconds to load up all the tweets. They have now this, you know, they have these rounded corners for the design, and it seems like there's some wasted space in the design. And then they got rid of uh, what was one of my favorite features, which is the, the swipe on the tweet to get to, uh, to shortcuts on it, and they don't have that anymore. The i pad app has always been a bit different they've kind of looked at it from a different uh uh you know user experience angle and i think that it's great and some people disagree with that they don't like the the various trays and stuff that you can pull up different um different screens and then move things over but i really like it and i hope that they don't change it too much and i'm afraid that they're going to uh because twitter's new thing now is of course to uh to try and unify all their interfaces so they're able to, to best uh, get new users to understand how to use it. Well, and this is not at all does... like what the web interface is like now or what iOS is like. Yes, so there's... Indeed. I'm yeah. actually looking at Instapaper in the background. Like, let me get Twitter in the background. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the, the Twitter iPhone interface is totally different than the iPad right. interface now. So you have to not imagine that they were that exactly gonna... the same before, but right. they were a lot closer. Yeah. And you have to imagine that they're going to change it to try and... Because their whole thing is, again, the unification. So they're, if they want to stick with that, and I think they're going to, they have to change the iPad app. And I'm really kind of afraid to see what they do with it, uh, given that I don't really like the the uh, uh, iPhone version. Well, but the Discover there's third parties area. apps. There's there's TweetBot, which I use in the you iPhone like. now. I like. like. They don't have a uh, an iPad version, so maybe they'll come out with one, or maybe there's an opportunity for some other third-party developer to come out with one. But for now, I really like still... Uh, Twitter for iPad, and I hope that they don't change. Twitter it is. Number four. Number four, I'm going to go with uh, with Reader, which is another one in my R -E -E -D -E -R. main doc. R-E-E-D-E-R? Yes, and so this is another one that, would, that has been out for a while, and it is an RSS reader, and, you know, we just talked about kind of Flipboard replacing uh, the need for RSS readers for most people. For people who are real news junkies, of course, they mainly use RSS readers, uh, and I'm one of them. Um, but I love Reader so much more than I love any other RSS reader because, like, Google Reader, which I use on my computer a lot, uh, is, is great because it populates things like this. For example, you can't use Reader without using Google Reader because that's how you pull in all the different RSS feeds. But the interface of Reader itself is so much nicer, just the little things that you can do with, with pinching to open up uh, little areas. And then, uh, you know, diving into things. And it's, it's just such a better experience than trying to look on a, on a silly little screen and, and just clicking around. Um, now, how would it compare to something like Feedly? Have you played around with Feedly? I played around with it a bit. I still like Reader's interface better. Um, Feedly is cool because they have, a, uh, they have good syncing, right, between all the different... They have an iPhone version, they have an iPad version, mm -hmm. and they kind of... Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think they do a better job of, of serving up things that you might like. Um, well, they also have a nice um, uh, Chrome extension. They have Chrome extension. It, right. it, it, it's also more visual. They yeah. almost do more of a, it's like a Flipboard, more flipboard Reader right. hybrid. Yeah. So I think Reader is in a good position where they're, it's really built for hardcore uh, RSS slash news junkies. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's not trying to be too visual or anything. It's just doing a visual job on the on the experience side of things, but not doing it on the on the actual content side of things. Right. So I like it, um, and I've always liked it. It's another thing that I use across both iPhone and and, uh, and iPad, and um, it's something I use every single day. And I prefer. It's one of those things where I prefer using the iPad to read my RSS feeds because I like Reader so much. I prefer using it over the computer. Number five. So number five. So this is a tough one. There's so many other apps that I like. <laughs> but um, you can only choose one. I know. I'm going to go with Netflix because I really like the new uh, the interface that they, that they just launched a couple weeks ago. So they, this is uh, one thing where they had done it on Android first, I believe. And... Um, then they finally came out and, and did a, a new interface for the iPad itself, too, which is great. Uh, the earlier iPad interface was pretty awful, uh, if you, you know, in my personal opinion. Uh, this new one is great. They have uh, along the top, they have what you're currently watching. And these are things like the other night we were watching Friday Night Lights. And then they, right. uh, the Internet in our apartment actually cut out. And so it just remembered exactly where I was. And I can easily just hop back into what I was watching last uh, right along the top there. And then they have... Um, you know all of the different recommendations and all of your different cues, of course, uh, and things based on what you what you've liked in the past. And it's a very visual experience now. It's really nicely done, um, and it looks like rather than before, where it looked like a port of the website, mm -hmm. just kind of into a, a native 
uh, it looks shell. a lot more like what you'd see on the Apple TV, for yes. example. Yeah, so you scroll through all these things, loads loads all the pictures in really fast, and I think that this is a great experience in terms of uh, in terms of actually browsing Netflix. Of course, you have to pay for Netflix, sure. um, seven ninety nine for streaming only if you want to do that. Um, but as long as you have it, I think that this is this is a really nice interface to be able to do that. And yeah, the the great thing is the. Uh, syncing it up between all the different things so you can put things in your queue if you're browsing from the iPad app you can put things in your queue and then watch it on the Apple TV later or mm -hmm. on the PC or wherever you're going to watch it it's funny we have a Netflix ad later in the show and I feel like we just did it <laughs> <laughs> well there we go I didn't even know that that was not on purpose no he didn't he actually doesn't know yeah. he doesn't know any of that information but no it's true I mean that's that's one of the nicest things about having Netflix on all different devices particularly your iPad app is if you've got some downtime and you want to be watching a TV show or an episode of Friday Night Lights like we're going through right now or a movie, but you don't have time to finish it, yeah. you don't have to like fast forward later on and right, try to remember, remember where, where you, you left were. off. Yeah. That's the key. And Netflix is under a bit of fire now, as, as we've all heard They've quite a bit. They've had a tough bit. year. They've had a tough year. Um, but I think, you know, I think they're starting to right the ship uh, a bit again and, and figure out how things are done and you know, creating the new iPad app and, and they'll be getting the experience and more things. I still think like their ultimate... Uh, you know, end game here is moving into more of a HBO direction where they become, you know, someone that serves up uh, their own content along with movies as like a you wrote as a about backdrop that recently. to it. Yeah, and so yeah. Um, it'll be interesting to see where they take things. But for right now, it's a it's a great iPad app. So you've got besides our one overlap, which was Flipboard. Yep. Uh, what nine extremely awesome uh, new iPad apps? If you, if, if you've got a new iPad, then these are definitely right, apps the ones that you want to use. You should get. But There's if you've so already got ones. one, uh, you, you either may not have these apps already, or you've just sort of forgotten about how great Instapaper is. These are, these are all things that can definitely be part of your daily routine. And the friends of ours, and we both have them, sometimes I have someone say, you know, I might sell my iPad. I just never use it. I just... I don't have any reason to use it. I think you are not using the right apps, man, because uh, once once you get used to your iPad, I mean, this is like an absolute joy. I love putting my laptop away um, and being able to use my iPad, uh, especially at the end of the day. All right. So thanks for that. Yes. All of our top fives. Good, good, good picks, MG. It's almost like you Solid. do this I feel for like a they were. I feel like they were easy picks, but... If someone is getting a new iPad and they want to know what to get, I think those are the you ones. you got to be truthful. Yeah. Uh, for all the links to the apps we mentioned, if you missed anything or you're like, what was MG's number three, don't worry about it. We'll have all the links at twit.tv slash IPT. That's our website. That's where everything lives. Past shows, subscription links, show notes. You can, you can, you can look back on episode 76, which apparently has no... Oh, that's because... <laughs> Wow, episode 76 has no description. Maybe that was the week I was gone and Leo did it alone. <laughs> huh, yeah. Dotting I's and crossing T's. Anyway, I'll fix that after the show. Uh, by, the t by the time anybody who's watching this that's not live, that'll all be fixed. Uh, quick reminder that we record iPad, li iPad Today live on Thursdays, 4.30 p.m. Eastern, 1.30 Pacific, thereabouts. And if you have app ideas of your own, always shoot us an email at iPadToday at twit.tv. We read our email religiously, and we love getting all of your input. Thoughts, comments, ideas, anything. I uh, want to quickly thank Audible. They are our first sponsor of this episode of iPad Today. If you're not familiar with Audible, boy, you are missing out because they have over 100,000 titles. 100,000. Think about how many books that is. So, so, so many books. MG, right now, you're, you're sort of alternating between Steve Jobs' biography yep. and In the Plex. Yep. Those, are your two, those are your two big books. Yep. Both books could be read to you. Uh, you just put on your headphones, lay back in bed, and just have someone read you the book. So if yeah. your eyes are tired, you feel like taking your glasses off, for example, Audible's really good for that. But it's not just for tired eyes. It's for busy people. You're commuting. You're in your car. You don't have time to read a book. Uh, you're at the gym. Uh, you like to walk a lot. Uh, you know, crank it up um, uh, when you're at home making dinner and you, you want to really get through a book, but you don't have time to read or you just... You prefer to have an audiobook read to you. What's nice is that if you go to audiblepodcast.com slash iPad today, here's, here, here's, here's, here's our special offer. First of all, you go there and you just start browsing through some books. If you're not familiar with Audible Works, they, it's nice. They've got new and notable. They have um, a whole section of books that are read by the author themselves. That can be really cool. Um, you can you can look through you know tech books, uh, books that are you know horror books, uh, mystery novels, that sort of thing. So depending on the genre that you like, you can get all sorts of titles to you um, straight away. But the best part is, if you're not already a member, 
for signing up by using our free code, you get a free audiobook of your choice. Any book. Any book you want. No judgment. You don't even have to tell us what you downloaded. It's all good. Audiblepodcast.com slash iPad today is the code. You just sign up, name, email address. Easy, easy, easy. Um, and there are a lot of different ways that you can listen to Audible books as well. The iPad is one of them. Thanks again to Audible for sponsoring this episode of iPad Today. Again, audiblepodcast.com slash iPad Today. Free book. It's Christmas without having to spend a dime or Hanukkah or Kwanzaa or uh, winter solstice day. All right, so what's been going on in uh, iPad land over the past week? Well, there is a, do you use a uh, little free program uh, it's for Mac, I believe for PC2, called Skitch? I know it. Um, I've known it for a, a while, and it was a very popular uh on the Mac, on the Mac in particular, yeah. for a long time. But uh, no, I don't particular. I don't use it myself. But I've heard a lot of things. You, you've heard of Sketch, and yes. some other folks might. You you might actually um, know the logo. Recognize better. the logo <laughs> yeah. because it's actually kind of ugly. I yeah. always <laughs> wondered why the Sketch logo looks the way it does. But Sketch was bought by Evernote back in August, um, and it was actually it's actually a really good partnership because what Sketch does very well is I'll just show you in real time. Um, let's load up a picture of MG and I. I swear that was just there. I didn't even think about this too much before the show. Let's say that I wanted to talk about, you know, who's the smarter one type of thing. There's my arrow. Okay, let's go to, let's say a little something. S M it's pointing at your neck. T. It's pointing at my neck. Well, I have a smart neck. So that's the smart one. And there's, you know, the, the, uh, the one with brain. So the idea is, is that you can mark up. Did you say brave? Uh, brains. Oh, no. <laughs> You've got brains. You should put brave. Well, you're brave too. Uh, and, you know, let's say I wanted to highlight an elbow. Let's say I don't like the color pink. Let's, uh, you know, let's highlight your ear in red type of thing. And, you know, if you wanted to write something, you want to move something around. I don't really like where that smart went. Let's move this arrow to my, more of my head type of a thing. So you get the idea is that a Sketch makes it very easy to annotate pictures. Yep. Now, this is all sort of silly. You go, well, why? okay, that's fine, Sarah. What are you going to do with that? But imagine if you have a presentation, you know, you're going to be showing slides at a meeting type of a thing. This is, Sketch makes it extremely easy to not have to load this up to some, like, I don't know. I mean, you don't have to use Photoshop, and a lot of people end up using um, apps or programs that are a lot more complicated than what they need for very simple stuff such as this. What's great about Sketch, partnering up with Evernote, is that now, let's say I'm all done with, with my photo and this is going to be something that I use in my next Twit production meeting, I can go ahead and you know send it out to a variety of places. Oh, by the way, this also works with AirPlay and Mirroring works too. So you could actually use that you know in, in, in a meeting, let's say, Twitter, uh, email, uh, camera roll, or I can send it to Evernote. Um, at this point, you know, I can give it a name. If you're a user of Evernote, you know that this can end up being really helpful. Evernote is also one of those one of those apps and programs that you can have on all of your devices um, to 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 save all of your stuff. I've got gone ahead and saved to Evernote at that point. So this is great. Sketch has been available for some time. Um, Android app actually came out first. They still mm -hmm. don't have an iPhone app, which is a little weird, but uh, the folks at Evernote are, or Sketch, well, they're the same folks now, I guess. Say. The iPad is really the better place. To so one thing that people used Sketch for right back in the day was taking screenshots. Uh, that too. People would do that. Can you do that on the i on Android phones? Because that's obviously <laughs> that's something that people always complain about. There's no built-in mechanism to take screenshots. So I wonder if Sketch is is at all a replacement for Very that. Very good idea. And we'd have to ask the all about Android folks that question because I don't know. You can do it from the iPad uh, interface, though. Obviously, we've got a nice little uh, screenshot button uh, right on your main Sketch page on my iPad, mm -hmm. Jammerbee. <laughs> there you go. So if I went ahead and chose screenshot, then uh, power and home, obviously you know how that works. Yep. Um, yeah, it's nice that they teach you that right there because I feel like a lot of casual users don't have any idea how to take a screenshot. We have a segment on the show called the Duh Tip. Yeah. You, you, you know it. Yeah. Um, once a week, if not more, someone will send in that as a Duh Tip. And it's a great one. But it's true. It's like people are discovering. Do you know that if you press the power on the home button, right. you take a screenshot? Because there's no visual like, 
cue that, that iOS gives you when you first start it up or anything to tell you that's how you do it. It's true. So what's nice about Sketch is that now when you start taking screenshots, that's all going to start showing up uh, in your screenshot area, which is, again, very helpful. Sketch is cool. Um, it's completely free. It's a long time coming for the iPad. And although I understand why iPhone users would, would like this, I don't see the real estate being as easy on an iPhone. I mean, on an iPad, it's like it's made right. for something like right. this. Uh, also, the Kindle app has gone an update, and it's for me. I don't feel like it's a it's a an update that I would use too heavily, but it's definitely good for people who are in the Kindle ecosystem, the Amazon ecosystem, mm -hmm. um, who want to have um, some of the capabilities that you would have on the Kindle Fire, for example, as uh, that you do on the iPad. Right. There's about 400, you know, or so uh, newspapers and magazines that were previously not available on the iPad through the Kindle store that are now. Not all of them. Uh, in fact, you, you still have to go through Amazon because in-app purchases don't actually work anymore. Right. So it's something that you have to buy or subscribe to through Amazon, but then through WhisperSync will show up on uh, your Kindle app pretty easily. So it's all the ma all the periodical stuff. The, mag the magazine stuff is the main update, right? Because they, yes. they now have you can view these magazines. But it's basically just uh, screenshots or scanned images, right, of the... of what you're looking at? On yeah, the, yeah. This is the latest issue of Rolling Stone. And, all and it the, is actually like scanned pages of what the Rolling Stone it is. It really is. I guess I'm so used to the way that beautiful iPad enabled magazine apps look that I'm sort yeah, I'm sort of looking at this going, okay, well yeah, that looks like Rolling Stone, but then when I when I start zooming in, it's kind of blurry. It almost looks like it's like a scanned image because that's kind of what it is. Yeah. It's almost more of like a PDF experience. Although you do have a nice, easy way to, to flip through your yeah. pages. That's, I mean, in some ways, some people might like that like better that because better. it's more simplified than, you know, trying to learn a new interface for some of these iPad magazines can be complicated. I mean, some of them have, you know, three finger swipe up launches uh, the tray to be able to navigate and, you know, two finger swipe from the side brings down a little bookmark thing. Or they have all these these random uh, non-unified different uh, UI tech or UX techniques to be able to, uh, to do things. So in some cases, I think people will like just having a very straightforward scanned magazine. And the, right. the nice thing, of course, is that Anyone who has a Kindle Fire or uh, just browses, you know, Amazon generally now can actually use this stuff if they have an iPad too. And before, you know, it was it was uh, kind of a, a a problematic area, I guess. I think also anyone who is uh, like a diehard Kindle user, well, not all of them are going to have iPad apps, but this the way that this looks is much more Kindle-like than it yeah. is iPad-like. So right. it's a little bit of you know, it's Amazon getting people used to the way that the Kindle experience would be. Yeah. Not just the fire, but just reading books or magazines in general. What I what I like in general about the the concept of them doing this and keep it keeping on doing these updates, I really appreciate the fact that they have the Kindle Fire now, of course, and it seems like it's doing pretty well by most accounts. You know, we'll see how the holiday sales are. They should be very strong. And but Amazon is still committed to updating the, the you know the version for iOS users who, you know, they're mm -hmm. still loyal, presumably loyal customers, even though they chose to use the uh, the iPad over the Kindle Fire right now at least and so they're showing them you know we want to have parity between the two different things and so we're going to keep up to date with that well that's smart yeah it's smart but not every company would do that you know they'd say like yeah Apple screw you guys for yeah right <laughs> Apple does not have iBooks on uh, the Kindle Fire no, nor no, will they ever have bad. iBooks on yeah, the Kindle Fire yeah. so yeah so that's the that's it's a, it's the new Kindle iPad app um, it's definitely Definitely moving in the right direction. They also they uh, introduced some other features, um, PDF support, uh, ability to um, to download textbooks and be able to make notes. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's the Kindle uh, iPad app. Totally free update. And finally, <laughs> Live Stand. This is Yahoo's news reading yes, app. Yes, I have it on mine um, too. We have talked about Live Stand in the past, and I haven't been very kind with Live Stand. And the reason is because I don't like. It's not only that I, I'm not crazy about the layout, but um, I'm not really crazy about the way that... See, I like... Oh, I hate this. I just don't know why it has to look like that. Like, why... World news. Why is it covered up? It's never... <laughs> it's like almost never Well, they're trying to be up. very cute with the UI that they're doing, and yeah. it's just not really a UI that a human being would ever use. Uh, right. And it's kind of... You've, you've got your library up here, and it's somewhat unintuitive to... to Anyway, I, I've made these arguments in the past. None of that is fixed. But what has been updated are a couple things, uh, notably something called Shine for Yahoo, which is 
Yahoo's uh, deals area. So you can get quick living social group on deals. And if you allow live stand, which is the overall app, um, to geolocate you, all the stuff comes up really nicely. For example, if I want to look through local deals, uh, go ahead and click uh, my local deals area. It looks like there's some sort of yoga deal. Um, and live stand is actually kind of slow too. This isn't our network because it, I had the same problem at home. I'm not really sure what the deal is, but this is a living social deal. It's in San Francisco, 30 bucks for unlimited yoga, which is normally 150. That's a great deal. Um, and so there's a bunch of other deals here as well. That's so cool. This is something that's, that's something that you don't see on most other. Right. It, it's weird, you know. <laughs> I don't. I don't know if they did it completely independently. Obviously, not all of them did it completely independent of one another. Maybe they saw the success that Flipboard was having, and then they they launched in these projects. But now the fact that we have. Yahoo doing one of these, AOL does one of these, mm -hmm. and Google now has Currents, another one of these. They're all doing these reader apps, and they're all more or less the same. They have different, slightly different uh, UIs, but they're all the same basic idea. So I like that this has some things that are slightly different, things like deals, uh, which you know aren't a focus of, of something like Flipboard or Currents, uh, for example. Right. No, it's it's a nice it's a nice built-in area. It's not just deals. They've got recipes and some health tips and that sort of thing. But um, they uh, um, live stand also got Twitter integration. Do yeah. you think? <laughs> wow. How, how did they not have that before? Right. Well, right. They, they had didn't. Facebook before, they right? Had, yeah. They had Facebook and email. Where you're too big. Email. Send to. Yeah. Yep. Ooh, nothing I want more than some live stand. Did they have emails BBS support friends. too? And like, <laughs> what else do they have in yeah. there? So the idea is, is that if you're reading. They go back to home. If I'm reading uh, a Wired article and I like what I'm reading, let's go up to uh, let's go into uh, uh, Autopia. I had to, I had to really think about that. That's how much I know about cars. And you know, I like I like the article that I'm reading. You have a nice handy dandy little send to, and there's Twitter. Now I I know you might be thinking, how in the holy heck? Was that not part of it before? It wasn't. So now it is. So for whatever reason... The car of tomorrow recognizes your butt. That's the article you pulled up. <laughs> I, was so, I was so busy looking at my send to. Well, so now live stand also, the content. The content is really king here. That's, uh, that's a futuristic car. It'll yeah. recognize your butt. Maybe well, that's iPad 3. Maybe it'll recognize your butt. That would, yeah, you just sit on it. Yeah. You just be careful, though, because you don't want to break it. Although if it gets thicker then maybe it can, it can handle a little bit more weight. I'm going to start using this, uh, this app now. They've got great content. Great content. Yeah. Cars and butts. <laughs> eh, just, just keeping it clean here on iPad Today. So those are three pretty cool updates. Uh, finally, uh, we got an um, uh, email from Paul, Paul Gans in Venice, Florida. I want an iPad case that has earbud storage, he says. Not a bag, a case. Minimal storage compartment for my earbuds, maybe a few other little things, but keeping it light and low profile. Now, I went ahead and did a little search, and there's a, um, there's a case from M Edge called the Recon Jacket uh, that's pretty cool. Um, it is, uh, if you click on, yeah, there's, there's a couple different views. Looks sort of like an accordion. Yeah, but if you but as you can see, it's got a little pouch. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, when you it's can... closed, it's got a certain style. It's not for everybody. I mean, it might be like a little too Indian Jones for somebody who wants something that's like sleek leather type thing. But it's got a nice little pouch. Um, it's a stand as well, and it's not that much considering that iPad cases can be really pricey. I yeah, mean, it's, even the it's less than even the leather this thing. smart cover. Yeah, smart cover is which was a... I think sixty nine. Yeah. So. That's something that I came up with. That's but always I figured. that's always been one thing that's confused me about Apple: the fact that they have never come up with a better solution. You know, the iPad, iPhone's been out since 2007. The iPad for a year and a half, almost two years now, and they have never come up with a good solution for what to do with earbuds when you're not using them. Like, you know, for the power thing, for this, for the. Um, for any Mac, they have, a, they have a great thing, which is that you can wrap the cord. Yeah, you sort of, you it's, got the yeah, little you ears. you bring up the little ears and you wrap it right around. That's that's a great idea, and, and I love that thing about it. How did they not come up with something like that yet for either the the uh, the iPhone? Yeah, there you go. The well, iPhone I mean, or the how iPad. how are you going to make this tiny? I, don't, I think that you just do it, you'd have to do it via the case. You wouldn't do it on the device itself. You know, you'd have some kind of case that Apple would make and sell that would have a little nice way to, to wind up the, the earbuds in it. You know, eventually, hopefully, uh, we, we reach the point where technology can do one of the, the hardest things apparently in the world to do, which is make usable uh, wireless earbuds, uh, you know, know, via Bluetooth or something. I don't but know why we're still until we get there, th it drives me insane every time I reach into my pocket, and it's like somehow those, those earbud cords are able to tangle themselves more than is, is humanly possible. If I tried to tie them in a knot, I couldn't do it as well as it happens naturally when they're in my pocket. <laughs> 
Yeah, like like this? Yes. <laughs> right. I mean, these these what I do is like I wrap them nicely and yeah. then I put them in my purse and then it takes me 10 minutes every time I go to the gym or want to make a phone call. I'm with you. So it, you'd think that Apple would have come up with some solution for that, even just some little stupid accessory where it's like, you know, attaches onto the back and you can just wrap it around just like the uh the 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 power cord for for MacBooks and stuff, but yeah, so that's a good solution. Until then, this is, a, this is a nice case. I'm sure some other people uh, either have ideas or are using other cases. If so, please send them to us, iPad Today at twit.tv. We'll try to feature a few of them if they're good and I've they're not seen, too expensive. I've seen a mock-up of it. I don't think it was an actual product. I think I saw it on Tumblr one day where it was like um, a clip that goes around the iPhone and you can kind of wrap, wrap your... Uh, headphones around that but the problem with that is it covers the screen so then if you want to like pull out your iPhone really fast and use it you have to take that off because it's right in front of the screen so just saying there's there are thoughts about this out there but no one's come up with a good solution for it yet exactly all right before we move on to the app cap awards let's go to Leo with a little something from Ford hey everybody Leo Laporte I thought we'd take a, a little ride we've been talking about the Ford Sync and my Ford Touch for so long, and I've never actually shown you how it works. You know, Ford sent down this new 2012 Ford Focus, not mine to keep, alas, but I would like to show you, as long as I've got it, a little bit about the nav and the services and the app link and all the cool things. Let's get inside, and I'll give you a tour of the 2012 Ford Focus. We're gonna, I'm just going to go for a little ride. Look, see this button? Watch. I got my foot on the brake. You press the button. It's a fob. Keyless. Car starts up. Oh, here we go. I like this too. When the screen comes on, it says, "Hello, good morning. You're arriving. You're driving a Ford." All right, let's go here. Yeah, this is nice. This is sweet. Hands on the wheel, eyes on the road. That's the whole idea behind Sync and My Ford Touch. But you hit this panel right here, and you can do anything. So one of the nice things, of course, uh, about Sync and My Ford Touch is, I can connect to a cell phone. I've got my uh, iPhone hooked up here. But not just as a phone, I can make calls with it, of course, but can I, I can also uh, use it as a media device. So watch, I'll play a song here. Please say a command. Audio. Audio, say a command. Play artist Steely Dan. Playing artist Steely Dan. And now without doing anything, I've picked an artist. I can do the same thing with podcasts, books on tape or audiobooks, anything that's on my devices, I can play. I can even say, let's play the radio. The idea is you can do anything you want with this. Uh, you've got a whole media hub, so if you've got a Nano, the kid's Nano, if you've got a phone via USB or Bluetooth, uh, you just talk to it and tell it what you want to hear. Let, let's give it a try here. This is while I'm driving. USB. USB. Play artist Steely Dan. Now that's cool, isn't it? It's little things like that to just make it a pleasure to drive a Ford. Oh, Leo, we miss you, buddy. Hey, so what are we doing with these silly hats on? Why? It's AppCap Award time! <laughs> you know, you look really good in that Grinchy sock. What is that? I don't know. Mary Twitmas, MG. Yeah. Mary Twitmas. This is my favorite part. <laughs> what, is it? what a sport, huh? <laughs> Boy, no, you do look good though. Very handsome. It's 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 very you. You're you're good in a felt. Yeah. All right. So this is the part of the show where we talk about our favorite uh, app of the week, and this app that I discovered. I thought I was just the smartest person in the world. I have discovered the best new app ever. Well, it's not actually brand new. In fact, it came out earlier this summer, but we've never talked about it on the show, and I have no idea why, because it's awesome. If you want a time waster, if you're sick of your family and need to get away, you know, you don't need a Snickers bar. You need Video Time Machine. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, this app is $2. Before you say $2, what in the heck? Uh, let me show you why it's worth it. Okay, so Video Time Machine is um, a way to bring up videos. These are all coming from YouTube, by the way, um, in variety of categories over the years. So let's say I want to go, well, I don't want to go too far back. Let's go, I say I want to go to 1908. 
Why interesting. Something from Barcelona, 1908, comes up. We were just in Barcelona. I actually looked at this already, so I knew that 1908 was a good year. This is a YouTube video um, that is, uh, it's, it's this, um, well, let, me, let me speed forward a little bit. So how do they know it's from, oh, well, the title says it's from 1908, but how does the app know to search and know that that's from 1908? It's just pulling in through the metadata? Like, because obviously... <laughs> Native metadata wouldn't have that. It's from 1908. There was no metadata in 1908 to be able to put this in. So are they just parsing the title? I believe, I believe it's actually like human curated. Yeah. Okay. So this is not necessarily everything that's on YouTube right. from the year so 1908. Right. They don't have all of it, but they, they don't have, have good, all yeah. of it. But they have, they have quite a bit. Now, if you go, okay, well, what else do you have besides this really neat train tram going through Barcelona in 1908? I watched this whole thing, by the way. This is just absolutely fascinating. You can go ahead and, and start flipping through Moscow clad 1908, whatever that is, St. Kilda, it's people and birds, that's an extract from a movie. I'm looking in the all section, but I can actually drill down into just movies. Okay, so we've got, we've got 12 movies to choose from. I mean, this is very early on. But, okay, so it's like, well, I'm not really into anything, you know, before... 1970. Well, that's fine. You just go ahead and every year is represented. 19. Whoa, okay. Well, right. well that's good scene. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, I drink your blood even better. Some delightful <laughs> movie called I Drink Your Blood is a tra trailer from 1970. That's movies. Oh, what about music? Elvis Presley singing Sweet Caroline. Haven't seen that before. Ooh, I can go ahead and watch that. Again, these are all YouTube videos and you can go full screen if you want. So the idea is it's like, okay, you get the idea. It's a bunch of videos that are within certain years in certain categories. I can go into TV. It's kind of fun, actually, because when I went back far enough, it's like there is nothing in the TV section. Right. You know, before... Before TV was invented. Before TV was invented, you know, it wasn't always around. Right. MG. Our parents grew up without TV right. for a while, anyway. I heard that. Yeah, me too. What else? Oh, poor them. Uh, and then, it, of course, it goes up all the way to 2011. It's actually kind of fun looking through some of these videos that change over the years because you can see, like, the high-def versions uh, some movie called Yuck, or some song called Yuck, uh, Super Bowl halftime show. Um, I actually went back to, That's gosh, cool. I think it was like uh, 1974, and uh, I found, let's see if I can find it again. It was the uh, it was John Lennon on Monday Night Football. Now that's weird. <laughs> yeah, okay, that's would weird. I have found that on YouTube? Probably yeah. not. But it was what, kind of fun. What is um, year. what does random bring up? Is it something totally random? Random within 1974? No, it's totally random. Yeah. So we're, let's go to back to 1895, and this is something called Unknown Title. Awesome. Oh, this was the initial video shot with an iPad, I think. Right. Yeah. That's kind of looks like that too. Yeah. 1895. This is great. <laughs> I mean, I'm kind of a. I don't, I don't know if I'd say I'm a history buff, but I like stuff like this, where so, you, can, you can categorize by date. The key thing, and I saw someone ask this in the chat room, does it have AirPlay? Oh. This seems like the perfect app for AirPlay, you know, where you could just put these on, scroll through them, and then watch them onto your TV. It looks like it doesn't yet. No. They, they, they got to get on that. They need That's AirPlay on That's a very good call. Video time machine, folks. You heard it here. We need more. They actually have a kind of a good story in their uh, information section. The, the creators talk a little bit about why they decided to make this. They were, you know, looking for videos from 1996. Yeah, decided, that's really cool. Yeah, I, I like it too. It's it's the sort of thing that um, you, you end up spending more time than you probably should on it. Um, and, you know, it is what it is. But uh, I don't know much about 1933. I wasn't around yet. Well, the so original Mickey Mouse stuff. Yeah. yeah. So let's look at, uh, you know, something about Havana in the 1930s. Pretty different Cuba back then, one would think. Again, that's 199 It's just, it's fun. It's a fun time waster, um, and it's fun to share with people who uh, are going to be impressed by this sort of thing. That's a good point. Someone in the chat room, or a few people are saying, AirPlay, the icon will only show up if you have an AirPlay device. So it's possible that it does have it in there, and we just might not have an AirPlay device in here. Uh, that's true. We don't. So that um, could be it. Let me. Yeah. Well, you're. Uh, I, I will. I will look into, look into that it. While and, you're. Well, you're. And I'll bring us, up mine. Uh, your uh, app cap. Okay. Which so, is. I don't even know what it is yet. I know. We were. I was debating between two. I'll say what the first one was because I think it's a great app and, okay. and it's really cool. Uh, the first one was HBO Go, which uh, people should know about. It's you know it's a, it's a really great app for for iOS and, and specifically on the iPad because they have a great interface for it. But it's not my pick, so I won't show it. Uh, and I also have problems with the fact that we don't have cable, so we can't actually use the app because we don't have logins for being able to do it. You have to have cable and you have to subscribe to HBO to be able to do it, which sucks, and I hope that they change that someday. Me too. Um, but I will say that my one I picked is Grand Theft Auto 3, which uh, came out, I believe, a couple weeks ago. It came out while we were in Europe, 
and I was really excited. I actually didn't know it was coming out at all, uh, but they did it for the 10-year anniversary of Grand Theft Auto 3, which was, of course, a huge game uh, 10 years ago and, and remained huge as they did the subsequent um, sequels to it. But uh, Grand Theft Auto 3 in particular, more than Grand Theft Auto 1, which was kind of a silly top-down level thing uh, with poor graphics, Grand Theft Auto 3 really kind of revolutionized the game space because it made this really immersive game where you could, of course, become a criminal and uh, hijack cars and shoot people and all great fun. <laughs> yeah, very, very good family, <laughs> clean fun. And uh, so Grand Theft Auto 3... With the 10-year anniversary edition, they were actually able to bring it to iOS devices. So it works on both the iPhone and uh, iPad. And I'm not sure how far back it goes. I think you need an iPhone 4. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't think it's 3GS enabled. And then I think you need an iPad 2 maybe even because it's really it's pretty processor intensive. Actually, I don't think that's true. I think you can use it with an iPad 1. But anyway, it's pretty incredible how well they've recreated it uh, for the iPad. And... Um, so I'm going to launch into it here if I can get through all this stuff. I had loaded it up, so I thought I wouldn't have to do this. But uh, let me load this game here. It's okay. This is exactly what Leo does, too, because he's just, always showing off all the games. Yeah. So anyway, we'll load it up. And you can see, as anyone who's, who played the original version, it is really the same. They've, they've added some new elements, and they've completely redone the uh, the gameplay mechanics, of course, to be able to be used on a touch screen. Mm -hmm. So I can fast forward through it. That's just a cut scene that they show you uh, to kind of set up the action. And this is the final scene, and then we're going to get into the gameplay here in a second. And Give him liberty! Yes, let me move my head so you can actually see it. So you can get into the car here. And then you push on, you have the virtual buttons. This is the accelerator, and then you can do this to kind of move the car itself. Yeah, you're not bad. And you can hit on the brakes. Mm -hmm. And so you got to get over to where the uh, where the pink thing is. And you can hit people. <laughs> it's awesome. I like and I'm the gonna... description. <laughs> Find the pink thing. And so as you can see, it's pretty much uh, exactly what the initial awesome game was. And it's very smooth. Uh, it, it's it's almost incredible that this is some game that was huge for all the councils. You know, ten years ago, uh, before I was even of drinking age, and now this is something that you can play. Right on the iPad and on the iPhone too. And it's two ninety nine. Look at that! Hit someone! Hit someone! And that's the beauty of <laughs> Grand Theft Auto, right? Yeah. Well, and so you, you become this like homicidal maniac, but it's, failed supposed, it's fun. Um, and you weren't very good. And the reason why I think this is a is a great pick for this week because this week it happens to be on sale for two ninety nine. Normally this game is four ninety nine, which ah. is still an insane deal. I mean, when you consider that this game, I, I believe, it was fifty dollars right. back in the day when you would get it for the council. Now it's only four ninety nine. It's universal, so you get both the the iPad and the iPhone version for four ninety nine. And they have a forty percent off deal this week. And right now in the App Store, it's only two ninety nine. That's oh, so you guys got to get on this if you don't have. Yeah, if you're uh, at all a fan of these games. This is a, uh, it's pretty incredible recreation of uh, of a game that's, you know, a classic. Tenth anniversary, I can't believe it's been that long. Yeah. I mean, I remember talking about it back in the, you know, screensavers days, but I didn't realize it was actually that old. Yep. Good pick. Grand Theft Auto for iPad, now on sale, two ninety nine. Get it, get it now. Well, MG, we've come to the end of our show. So I can take off the hat. You can take off the hat. Uh, I'll leave mine on. It's well, comfortable. I'll leave it on. That's a good me. one. Well, right. you know, we, you don't want to leave before you howl, too. That's, that's one of your, oh, it's right. your second favorite part of the show. Right. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Thank you so much to MG Siegler for joining us. Yep. Uh, you're always an amazing co-host. I love having you here uh, when Leo's gone because it's easy. I don't have to try because I know that you live and breathe this stuff anyway. So. Yes. Always good conversation. Thank you so much. Yep. Uh, remember, you can subscribe a million different ways. Uh, watch past episodes. Watch this one a million more times if you want to. Twit.tv slash IPT is, is the mothership of all of our content. And Leo will be back next week. We will be here live. Uh, much of Twit is going to be dark next week, uh, but not iPad today. Leo and I will be here same time, same place, next Thursday, the 29th. Yes, the 29th. Um, until then, have a great week. Great holiday, everybody. And that's it for iPad Today. 